In this video, we'll talk about Griffith's experiment and how it contributed to our understanding of heredity. How do we inherit traits from our parents? It's a question that long perplexed scientists until the answer was eventually found in deoxyribonucleic acid, aka DNA. We now know that DNA is the hereditary material of all living organisms. But in this video, we're casting our minds back to the early 20th century, a time when even the best educated scientists couldn't identify the mysterious hereditary material. Meet Frederick Griffith, a British bacteriologist. In 1928, Griffith designed an experiment to develop a vaccine for bacterial pneumonia. Instead, he made an alternative but nevertheless valuable discovery. Griffith knew there were two different strains of Streptococcus pneumoniae, the bacteria that causes pneumonia. There's the R strain, which has a rough appearance, and the S strain, which has a smoother outer coat. When Griffith injected a healthy mouse with the R strain, the mouse was fine. It did not catch pneumonia. So, he concluded the R strain is non-virulent. When Griffith injected a healthy mouse with the S strain, the mouse caught pneumonia and died within a few days. The S strain is virulent. Moving to the next stage of his experiment, Griffith took the living, dangerous S strain and killed the bacteria with heat. As expected, when a mouse was injected with the heat-killed bacteria, it lived. The final step of Griffith's experiment was when things took an unexpected turn. Griffith mixed the living R strain bacteria, that's the non-disease causing strain, with a heat killed S strain. Even though neither of these strains killed mice on their own, mixed together they did. And when he isolated colonies of bacteria from the dead mice's blood, he saw that they contained living S strain bacteria with their characteristically smooth coating. What did all of this tell Griffith? Clearly, the heat-killed S-strain can transform the non-virulent R-strain into the smooth-coated virulent type. Griffiths named the process transformation. A transforming principle, he said, is transferred to harmless bacteria to make them deadly. The question remained, what could that transforming principle be? What kind of biomolecule or substance changes the characteristics of an organism? A protein? A sugar? RNA? Though Griffith didn't have all the answers and never developed that vaccine for pneumonia, his experiment was the first in a series of landmark experiments. Today, we know the answer. It's DNA. The DNA of the heat-killed strain survived the heating and was taken up by the living R strain, changing its morphology and physiology. But it wasn't until 16 years later that DNA was identified as the transforming principle in another milestone experiment building on Griffith's work. Three scientists, Oswald Avery, Colin McLeod and Macklin McCarty, sought to find out if transforming principle was protein, RNA or DNA. They took three samples of the heat-killed S strain of the bacteria, Streptococcus pneumoniae. To the first, they added protease. To the second, RNAs. And to the third, DNAs. As their name suggests, these reagents are enzymes that break down proteins, RNA and DNA respectively. Live R-strain bacterial cells were then mixed into each sample. The bacteria in the first two samples were transformed, as proved by the presence of live S-strain cells in the cultures. But the bacteria in the third sample, the sample with DNAs, were not. No intact DNA means no bacterial transformation. Therefore, the team correctly concluded that the transforming principle is DNA. Before these experiments, the scientific consensus was that proteins were the most likely candidate for the hereditary material, since they were diverse and complex. RNA was also considered, but it is less chemically stable than DNA. Discovering that it was, in fact, DNA accelerated our understanding of science and modern healthcare and paved the way for new treatments for disease. It explains why families look alike and why some diseases, like haemophilia, pass from generation to generation. And today, 
Griffith's process of bacterial transformation is still used routinely in labs for genetic engineering. Summing up, we have learned about how Griffith discovered the transformation principle, a key step in the discovery of DNA's hereditary nature. Thanks for watching.